Good morning from the Denver area. Cole and I are going to drive around Denver and right now we're in the Art District and that's a really cool picture up on the wall and I love the architecture of this line of buildings here. Rich recommended us going around Denver and finding murals. Other murals that we have passed so far had a lot of graffiti and then painted over, which is really unfortunate because somebody spent a lot, a lot of time putting together these murals and to deface them, you know, was really unfortunate. took the ID4 up to the top of the parking garage in Denver. We are going to head to Kansas City, Missouri next. We got some great pictures of the murals. This is the panoramic view of the city. We will see you soon. So Cole and I are at a King Supers in Denver. We're filling up the ID4 for our trip over to Kansas City. And this is the first King Super that we've stopped at for an electrified, Electrify America. I keep wanting to say electrified because the project is under Electrified Classics, but these charging stations are Electrify America. One of these times I may get it correct. Cole and I are leaving Denver, heading to Kansas City, Missouri, which is nine hours away and we just charged up. We charged up to 80% and we are at 219 miles potential. My side is set to 66, Cole's side is set to 67. It is 96 degrees out, so we're gonna run air conditioning until it cools down. Uh, if sun goes down and it cools down, and we'll see how many miles we can get. We're about a half an hour out of Denver and it looks like we're in flatlands. So this is gonna be a lot of the same. Here. We are about an hour east of Denver and this is our view at the moment, buddy. <laughs> Cole and I pulled into an Electrify America charging station. When we left Denver, we had 1616 on the odometer. The temperature at that point was 95 degrees. We set the cabin to 65 degrees. We've traveled 130 miles at an average of 55 miles per hour. It took us two hours and 25 minutes and an average of 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour. And when we pulled into this location, we had 64 miles left. And so we traveled 130, which if you saw the previous screens, that puts us at 155 miles potential used to 130 miles traveled. Cole and I are at the I-70 Diner, and we are heading to Kansas City, Missouri, well, at least the next leg of our trip. The cabin temperature set to 72, so it's not a 30 degree delta like we saw coming out of Denver. And it'll, I'm really curious to see how many miles we'll be able to get from this thing in reality. <laughs> Paul and I just pulled into Kansas City, Missouri, and we are going to stay the night here. And there's the beautiful city. It's all lit up and it looks very nice. We have to wash the window from all the, the bugs splattered on it. 
Cole and I just reached our destination. We traveled 197 miles, 72 miles per hour average, 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour. There is 28 potential miles left on the charge and total miles on the car at this point is 1,944 miles. And I'm not gonna do the math right now, but we did not run air conditioning or heat for those 197 miles. So I'm gonna do the math at another time because right now it is 2.30 in the morning and we are going to crash and start again tomorrow. Whoa. Um, yeah, so it's windy. now we can understand a little bit why there is windmills out here. Um, just based on <laughs> based on us trying to take a picture and a, and a short little video here, but yeah, the uh, horses in the background there, I'm sure, are nice and cooled off with this wind that's blowing through here. Absolutely beautiful. arrived at a electrified america charging station in topeka kansas and right next to where we are charging is the mustang mach e and it's a great comparison i'm glad we were able to park next to it because this is what we plan to do next season is do two roughly 90s possibly notchback mustangs one on the electrified side and one on the syncaster motorsport side and we, our giveaways would likely be a Mach-E and a Mustang. So stay tuned for next season. One thing that I found very cool about this car is the adaptive cruise control. And the feature can be turned on and off. And when you set it, it gives you this travel assist and what happens is, is it essentially keeps you right in the center of the lines and the effort behind moving the wheel becomes very minimal. Of course, you wanna to continue to hold onto the wheel, but it becomes minimal. So if you combine it by setting the cruise control along with the travel assist, it centers you as opposed to the lane assist will correct you if you become too close to the line and it kind of pushes you back in the lane. This travel assist actually keeps us right in the center of the lane. We're leaving Kansas City, Missouri. We are heading to St. Louis, Missouri. It's in the Rumble Strip. We almost oh, got clipped by the strip. Oh, oh shoot. Right. Oh, back into the Rumble Strip. Toby takes an exit. connected up and the ID4 is charging and we are parked at a Walmart and Cole has not allowed me to not go into Walmart and not look at the Hot Wheels section oh, yeah. Yeah. and because you're looking for what kind of Hot Wheels? It's called Super Treasure Hunt and they're really rare and I just think it'd be cool if I could find them. Very cool. And there he is. Two. Mark two. Nice, we should totally get that and modify it up for the 92. Totally. Either on the uh, electrified classic side or the Syncaster Motorsport side, painted red. That'd be pretty cool. EV and hybrid set. No, there's no, there's no. no. Oh, there's no Volkswagens in it. While Cole and I have been traveling across the United States, We've run across people who have hated EVs, and we've also run across people who have hated gas. And our oh. channel, <laughs> that's awesome. 
And our channel is to welcome EVs to the automotive world that we live in. I've never personally driven an EV prior to driving the ID4 and also celebrating gas. And there's, there's a lot of places EVs will fit into the market and help with the emissions, help with all of those sorts of things. Of course, there's discussions across the board about where the batteries come from. There's also discussions across the board about how much does a gas vehicle really affect the environment as opposed to a lot of other emissions that affect the environment. So one thing that we are not going to do in our channel is bash one or the other. We're going to look at positive solutions for both in this channel and look at how everybody can get on the same page and enjoy this transition in the standard marketplace of new vehicles going EV. It's time for Cole to have some fun again and wash the ID4. We're heading to downtown Indianapolis and we'll be uh, seeing the monument and taking some pictures. So we wanted to get the car cleaned up a little bit. It's uh, it's gotten pretty dirty. There's the monument up there. Oh no, we're parked under a bridge and there's something dripping on us <laughs> after we washed it. What? Seriously? Seriously. Oh, you didn't hear it dripping God, on the back yeah, there? Look at that on the window. Ah, uh, so, yeah. Oh, come on. You never keep a car clean after you wash it. It rains right after you wash it. Whatever it is, you can never keep a car clean after it's washed. We are leaving Indianapolis, and this is the first rain that we have had this entire road trip, right after we get a car wash. So it's a great time. So we didn't stick around Indianapolis very long, and we're heading over to Columbus, Ohio. Cole, well, you make a great co-pilot, buddy. Thank you. About our 10th Walmart so far. We've got these two Mark II Golfs, and we're gonna paint one for the Syncaster Motorsport side and paint one for the Electrified Classic side. <music> difference in comparison to uh, to the Midwest and the dry areas that we've traveled through. We are in Seneca Lake. Wait, we're not in the lake. <laughs> <laughs> that would be bad. No, the ID4 isn't in the lake either. We're, it's still it's on the road. <laughs> yes, we are in Senecaville. This is Seneca Lake, I think, in Ohio. And it is absolutely beautiful. Everything is green. And I have never seen so many lily pads in my entire life. We have a motorcyclist in front of us. And as you can see, the adaptive cruise control shows that it's a motorcyclist versus cars or big rigs. I thought that was a cool feature for it. Where are we? Pennsylvania. No, where are we before we get into Pennsylvania? Oh, West Virginia. There you go. Welcome to Pennsylvania. Nice. Bought this car in California, and we are headed to New Hampshire. Okay. It's been a long trip in the New Hampshire. I evening. bet. Holy. Oh, here's another one. Um, yep, that should be it. 
and my insurance is on my phone, so it's going to take me a second to... How much longer do you got? Uh, it'll take us, I think drive time is like, what, nine and a half hours, I think? And and yeah. and we stop every every three hours, yeah. roughly for an hour. So um, I got several emails here, so I gotta figure out which one it got emailed to. I think it's under this one here. That, the reason why it's all stickered up is because it's part of a YouTube channel. Okay. That we're doing, and it's the EVG wars, and it's electric versus gas wars. Okay. So, all right. Yeah. It, yeah, and we're t and we're taking two ninety two GTIs, putting like a five hundred horsepower rear end from a Tesla in one of the ninety two GTIs, and taking a and putting it underneath the other other ninety two GTI, <laughs> and and this this vehicle is part of a sweepstakes that we're giving away okay on in that all right in understand, that channel understand i understand but yeah so here's here's my insurance all right here's your stuff back yep. just going to give you a verbal warning awesome. all right I slow down a little it bit so much <laughs> just slow down um yeah i mean you've been driving for how long now it's a holiday enforcement period for us so Got at least you get out of pa i'd keep it below the speed or around the speed limit all right very much appreciate right. that sir thank you very much Shining station, and we have 119 on the battery. So it's getting kind of close, but I think we'll still make it. We are in Pennsylvania. It is raining still. Yeah. And this is probably our last sunset that we're uh, going to see on this trip. And here's my co pilot getting yet another amazing photo here. Again, our final sunset absolutely beautiful and I have absolutely lived on these Starbucks nitro cold brews in route so I've been opening them up putting them in my uh, travel mug here and we are going to drive 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 to get back to New Hampshire good morning from New York we didn't make it all the way to New Hampshire. We stayed at a Walmart last night, and today is a nice little bit of fog this morning. Beautiful green everywhere, and we are uh, we are definitely going to make the New Hampshire destination today. Massachusetts now and so far the uh, fastest traffic on the highway has been Massachusetts Connecticut and Ohio in that order the fastest back roads that we've experienced so far are definitely in Ohio we are heading to breakfast in Massachusetts and then proceeding up to New Hampshire So bud, now that we're on the East Coast and we're concluding our trip, what was your favorite part of the trip? favorite part was probably off-roading and going to Colorado and Ohio. 
What was your favorite part of the car? My favorite part of the car was probably all the cup holders and how comfortable the seats are. Nice. And now let me ask you, what was your favorite part of the car? So my favorite part of the car was definitely the comfort and the drivability. It was it was super comfortable at, you know, the speed limits were 80 miles an hour and you would never really know you were doing 80 miles an hour. It was just very, very comfortable at every speed that we went. Um, yeah, that's that was my favorite part of the car is just the comfort and the, the drivability of it. So what was your favorite part about the road trip back? So I think my favorite part of the road trip back has to be Utah, has to be Moab, because the landscape is just so significantly different than what I'm used to. I'm used to just everything, all trees, all green. Uh, Moab was just all red rock and just various different aggregate colors and and uh, just something foreign to me. So it was, I've always wanted to see the Arches National Park and that, that trip being able to four wheel and get off the main beating, you know, paved path was just wonderful. Yeah. I would have to say the, my second favorite part of the trip was visiting Rich in Colorado and visiting family members in Ohio. Yeah. Never played a real pinball machine before. No, I thought I just shot it and see where it goes. <laughs> oh, wait, the size, right? Yes. I uh, remember it now. I've done this before. You have? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I've done this before. You Not sure? Not like this. 